You guys have been asking me for more behind the scenes stuff on how I shoot these videos, and Moza asked me to review their latest gimbal. So why don't we blend those two ideas together? Let's get undone. Gerald He's crazy. What's happening everybody? I'm Gerald Undone and hold on to your butts. All right, this isn't gonna be a typical gimbal review because let's face it, you know what a gimbal does and you'd expect a premium gimbal to gimbal well. And I'm happy to report that the Moza Air 2 gimbals with the best of them. But what I do wanna do is look at the user experience with the app and how easy it is to program camera movements because that's something I've been wanting to make a tutorial on for a while now. But I feel like more of you probably have gimbals than you do expensive motion hardware. So I'm gonna show you how to do it on a gimbal and to make it even harder, we're gonna do a macro video. So there's a couple reasons why combining camera movement with macro video is hard. And by the way, when I say macro video, I mean one-to-one -one reproduction ratio. Anybody can just throw on a macro lens, but to really challenge yourself, try and get as close to one-to-one -to -one as possible. And when you do this, you'll notice two things. One, even the tiniest movement forward or backwards can cause you to completely lose focus. And two, any raised areas, like even small ridges on a product, can be soft if not managed correctly. So in order to overcome those obstacles, we have to build the idea of our product by assembling a sequence of its details bit by bit shot on a flat plane with camera movements that follow that plane. And if you want to give yourself a real challenge, don't allow any wide shots of the whole product until after you've assembled all of your macro detail shots. This will help you mentally find a way to motivate your shot choices, knowing that you have to convey your product or subject without having a wide shot to rely on. But let's go ahead and do some example shots and I'll show you what I mean. So first up, you need to put your gimbal on a tripod, or you can use the tripod feet that are included with the Moza Air 2, or whatever gimbal you're using. Just make sure that you put it on a stable surface. Keep in mind that you'll need to get really close to the subject, so both the gimbal and the product will need to be still and stable. Then throw on a macro lens and balance the camera on the gimbal. I usually use my DJI Ronin S for this, but this is one area where the Moza Air 2 really shines. It's one of the nicest gimbals I've ever used for balancing. You can lock off this motor here, which makes it easy because it's not rolling, and then the rest of the adjustments are really smooth and easy. All right, so now it's time to think about some of the features that stand out to you on the product that you're gonna be shooting. I'm gonna be using this original Nintendo Game Boy, and to me, some of the features that stand out are the controls, like the iconic A and B button, and obviously the text that says Nintendo Game Boy. So we're not allowed to use any of that because it's too obvious. We wanna create curiosity with our first few shots. Something that I think is interesting that isn't too obvious is this grill on the front. And also because this Game Boy is well used, there's quite a few scuffs and wear and tear and debris all over it. And because the color of this is pretty iconic, it's like the Nintendo gray color, I think showing some of the wear against that color could give it a fun look. So let's do a couple shots of those to show you how to deal with the issues that we mentioned earlier. Okay, so let's start with this grill, but first we'll have to load up the app so that we can program the movement that we want. And for the Moza Air 2, it's called the Moza Master App. It works pretty well. Often gimbal apps can be a little bit buggy, but I thought that the Moza app held up quite nicely compared to the others that I've tried. So we'll pair the app to the gimbal, and then we'll go into creative video mode. Now, the Moza app doesn't have a dedicated function for camera movement, but it does have the motion lapse feature, and we can use that to make the same motion, and we'll just completely ignore the time lapse function. Now we just need to set our start and end points, and I recommend setting them wider than you think you'll need, and also setting the duration longer than you'll think you'll need as well. Because when you play this stuff back, even small movements can look like they're covering a lot of ground with macro, and we need to make sure that we're not covering that ground too quickly. We also need to make sure that the product is perpendicular to the lens or close to it, because too much of an angle will look weird when we move across because of the shifting focus. If that's the look you're going for though, feel free to give it a try, but I prefer to build an assemblage of perpendicular shots and just suggest the depth in the viewer's mind. Now when it comes to focus, you'll either want to focus at one third of the way through the movement or two thirds of the way, but don't focus at the beginning or the end or the middle because it'll just look kind of weird. But make sure you put the best part of whatever detail it is that you're trying to show on that one third or two thirds focus spot. So for this shot, we're actually just gonna tilt up along the grill lines. This will give a pleasing logical flow to the shot. So we'll start just below the grill and then we'll set our first point. And then we'll move about a third of the way up and set our focus and then set our end point to just above the grill. And we'll give it about 15 seconds. But when it comes to the edit, we're only gonna use a small portion of this, just that period where it crosses over that one third focus section. So we can preview the motion to make sure that it looks good. 
And then we start recording on the camera and initiate the motion for real this time. Now whenever you're this close and you're panning and tilting, you have to be concerned with your focus because with such a shallow depth of field, the small changes in distance that occur between the planes can have a huge impact. So for example, when we're tilting like this, maybe right now the subject and the camera are 20 centimeters away and it's tack sharp. But if we tilt down just a little bit more, well maybe now it's 21 centimeters between the subject and the focal plane. And that one centimeter can be the difference between being sharp and completely out of focus when we're this close. And the same is true for panning. But there is one movement using a gimbal that doesn't have an impact on the focusing distance, and that's that inception rolling mode. And the Moza Air 2 is actually the best candidate for doing this with macro. Because remember when I said that even small movements forward or backward can completely ruin the shot? Well luckily, the Moza Air 2 doesn't require you to put any joystick input into the gimbal in order to control that inception mode. On the DJI Ronin S, the other gimbal that I like that has that, you have to hold the joystick to the side all the time in order for it to do that. And if you even slow down a little bit when you're shooting macro, it might look like a complete stop. And you can actually put sometimes a bit too much forward pressure just when using the joystick that can cause you to make the image soft and sharp as you lean in and out. But luckily with the Moza Air 2, you can just program it to roll at whatever speed you want, and it just does it until you tell it to stop. Also, don't be afraid of getting pretty intense with the lighting. You want those highlights to stand out and to creep into all the little textures, so experiment, but it's okay to get in real close or to cut a sharp angle. And you can definitely create this look by using other gear like sliders and motorized heads. But like I said, it seems like gimbals are pretty ubiquitous these days, so I felt like this was the right piece of equipment to do this tutorial on. Then just continue programming and recording your shots. My concept for this Game Boy will be to slowly add more obvious features intermixed with the wear and tear until I finally reveal the words and then end on a wider shot displaying the whole product. Try and use traces or edges or even color patterns from a previous shot in a subsequent shot in order to connect the images and complete the puzzle in the viewer's mind. And then add in some sweet retro synth music and a moody color grade and you should have something like this. If you want to see more details on how the Moza Air 2 functions as a typical run and gun stabilizer, there's plenty of solid videos out there already, so I'll defer to them. But overall, I like it. I'd say it's pretty comparable to the Ronin S, which was my previous favorite. There's a couple things that I like better than the Ronin S, for instance, the better balancing. I like the motor lock in the back, and I like the larger set of accessories. The Moza Air 2, for instance, comes with two quick release plates, and both of those plates work perfectly on Manfrotto tripods, where the Ronin plates are a little bit finicky. Now I know I'll get lots of questions about compatibility, but here's the thing. I'm kind of done trying to get gimbals to work perfectly over USB. I did have this one working on the Sony using this cable here, but even the cable that they recommend to use with the Sony a7 III doesn't work right and you have to use the older micro cable. And every gimbal seems to have all kinds of issues with different cameras and different cable configurations. And for the most part, I'm just kind of annoyed with trying to get it to work all the time. And luckily though, with these gimbals, you don't really need to have the cable connected to use 90% of the features. It's really just sort of a start stop recording but you can easily start recording on the camera and focus by wire is junk anyway so really other than the passive power supply which I kind of like because it makes your cameras last longer there's not a lot of reason to you know, forever battle getting the USB connections to work on a camera. Now the Ronin S probably does have the upper hand right now when it comes to camera compatibility over USB, but it took them months to get there and I'm sure the Moza Air 2 will get to the same level pretty soon. But again, I wouldn't make that the make it or break it feature because I don't think that you'll be perfectly impressed with any gimbal's compatibility with any various set of cameras. 
And as for a couple things that I didn't like about the Moza Air 2 as much compared to the Ronin S, I actually like the internal battery design on the Ronin S and I like how you can charge it internally. I didn't really like having to take the batteries out of the Moza Air 2 and charge them externally because despite what some reviewers have said, you cannot charge the Moza Air 2 batteries while they're in the gimbal. I also like the grip a little bit better on the Ronin and I also like that you can take it apart which makes it more compact when packing. But overall these are pretty minor details and both of these gimbals are capable of a heavy payload and both perform excellently. So if the Moza Air 2 sounds like a good fit for you, I think you'll be quite pleased with its performance and it's a little bit cheaper than the Ronin S as well, so you're getting pretty good value all the way around. Overall, it's a very gimbally gimbal and I give it 4.5 gimbals out of 5. But that's going to be it for me. I hope you found this video helpful or at least entertaining. And if you did, make sure you leave it the old thumbs up and consider subscribing if you haven't already. But if you did not find this video helpful or entertaining, feel free to hit the dislike button twice. Alright, I'm done.